death has always been there. Potentiality for death is always there. You know, but we tend to forget it, you know, and we always welcome birth, but we do not welcome death. Sometimes th thinking about death, you know, in our practice, thinking about death in, in daily life, some people thought that it is negative, you know, then you are very sad talking about death. But uh, let us say uh, things are impermanent. Just now we could not do the filming, we could not do the recording because the sound from the sky was so loud, you know, but then suddenly it also calms down. Life and death is, is like that, is present. As soon as we are born, death is waiting for us, but it is part of nature. And this part of nature with understanding, if we have this understanding, clear understanding from the beginning, then when it, when it comes, we will be lucky enough if he knows when it's coming. When it comes, then it is also part of our life. You know, we are happy living our life. We should be also peaceful and happy. To, to leave this life, you know, so to take a departure. Yeah, like, like you are just going somewhere, you take the departure. You cannot be sitting in a departure lounge forever. You have to depart, you know, some, somehow, somewhere. So when we recognize things like this as part of nature, it's very important. It's very important. And thus, we focus on the moment that we are living now, that we make this moment most beneficial, most beneficial for myself and most beneficial for you. So that coming back to be in the present moment is very important. The, talking about funeral in Thailand, uh, part of it is rituals, you know, rituals. Uh, and it, it has been shortened, you know, the, the length of days for funeral has been shortened. In, uh, even in my mother's time, that is 20 years ago, we keep her body for 100 days. Uh, before that, you know, we read in the text that the Chinese, you know, they would keep the body for, you have to be there for, at the grave, the parents' grave for one year or two years, three years like that, you know. In my time, you know, only 20 years ago, I preserved my, my mother's body for 100 days and then every night, every night we will do the chanting for her and uh, after 100 days, then we took her body to be cremated uh, in, a big, in a big way. And one thing that we usually do, we publish a Dharma book. We publish Dharma book in a way to make, make merit for the deceased. So that is part of the Thai culture. Uh, as, as I have seen, it started with King Rama the fifth. King Rama V, he was the one, of course, the printing just come in, you know, just came in at that time. So it was uh, uh, started in his time to publish Dharma book at, at funeral, to give away as gift at funeral. So that's a way of, one way of preserving Dharma, one way of preserving the teaching. And particularly if uh, the person who died is from big family, then the book will be very expensive. The book will be very, uh, how to say, uh, valuable, valuable. People would go, particularly to this funeral, in order to get the books, you know. So, but, but now I have to say, uh, with uh, economic pressure, uh, at most, generally, they would keep the body only for three nights. They do the chanting three nights, and then small gift, not, not anymore publishing the books. Still, with some well-to-do family, the books will come out maybe later, or uh, maybe three months later, they need, to, they need to be editing, writing, whatever. So, uh, that is the practice. But, it is more for the living. The funeral is more for the living than the deceased. But of course we do dedication of merit, you know, sometimes we even ordain, ordain uh, sons, usually sons, not, not daughters. Now I try to tell them daughters can also be ordained. They ordain sons at the time of funeral in order to dedicate the merit to the deceased. This is practice in my country.